Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video and today we're going for a bit of a retro vibe um, this is from my collection of games consoles and you know I do have a small but very much cherished collection of games consoles and this one uh, I actually found in a in a box of things that was given to me ages ago uh, and you know it, it was in f such fantastic condition that I thought it was a shame to, to let it go so I actually uh, rescued it, tarted it up, tidied it up, and uh, it's been in my cabinet for oh, probably at least the last three years or so. And today um, I actually got it out because it has some stuff on the hard drive which we found on there at the time, which we didn't have the heart to delete, that the previous owner had obviously had on there. It's quite cool to listen to, and I've got quite a bit of work in here at the moment, so I was just going to put it on and, and enjoy a bit. You know, and get the old girl out and just make sure she was okay. And to my dismay, she didn't boot. And um, in case any of you are wondering exactly what this is, well, check the video title, obviously. But if you're playing along at home, if you if you are familiar with these things, uh, we've got an NVIDIA MCPX X3. I think that was the South Bridge, if I remember rightly. We've got these nice big Samsung RAM chips, of course, and if you remember, there's two of them on the top side. There's two on the bottom, and remember you used to be able to get dream boxes, and you used to be able to double that RAM up. You did used to be able to install some extra yourself, if you knew how. Remember these things? Look in which video encoder you had. And these things, having problems with the filters when they used to blow and you used to get no friggin' video output. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who remember these things rather fondly, uh, it is, of course, an original Xbox, which I suppose we used to call an Xbox One up until the last few years. <laughs> anyway, when I got this particular machine, it had something installed on the LPC header. This thing, in fact. And as you can see there, I've actually just removed this this evening because it's looking a little bit sorry for itself. A couple of those tracks at the, at the far end there were looking a little bit corroded and you know, generally not too good. So it looks like a really early, I mean this is a version 1 board if I remember rightly. Uh, in fact somewhere I've got the RCD style power supply they sent out for everybody and indeed this machine when I originally found it in the box did have an issue with the power supply where the contacts are all along the back because there's no cable, no strain relief on the cable input. It did break and it was arcing across and it did have a nice black back down the back of it. Um, but obviously we repaired that. And it was fine, obviously, a few years ago, but been in my cupboard uh, in this in this office for a while now, and uh, yeah, so it's all a bit of a shame, really. But as I say, because it was looking a bit sorry for itself, I'm trying to get to the bottom of this uh, E07 error. Uh, I removed it and, uh, and actually found what I think may be the issue. So to be honest, and looking at it, it's probably just as well I caught it now and, and didn't leave it because it. it it could have got quite serious for this board. As it is now, it probably still is fairly serious, but um, it should be repairable, hopefully. So, yeah, this particular board was starting up to a, a frag, a flashing red and green light, if you remember what those were. The precursor to the red ring of death, and the yellow light of death, and the blue light of death, and the white light of death, and God knows what else we've got these days. So, it comes up to an error code E07, which is basically a hard disk drive timeout error. So that's usually something like a bad hard drive, or a bad IDE cable, or something along those lines. So, of course, we took the uh, the console, you know, took the hard drive out, had a spare IDE cable laying around, brand new in a packet, believe it or not. Um, put that in just to see if that was going to make any difference. Unfortunately, it didn't. Um, so then, like I say, we were looking, and I remembered way back when I actually originally f uh, refurbished this machine um, way back I think it was about 2013-ish if I remember rightly um, I remember it having this thing installed on the LPC header and just thinking yeah, yeah it should it really wants to come out to be honest it's not it's not particularly brilliant so we removed that and underneath here Obviously, this is something that happened at the installation time. Somebody must have caught uh, the masking on the board ever so slightly. And obviously, this being a converter garage unit, it, um, 
it's a little bit cold and damp in here at times. Probably not the best place to keep it. And I will be moving this into my house once this is finished, just to make sure that nothing else happens to it. And funnily enough, I do have another original Xbox, which isn't in as good condition, but is in perfect working order. It does have XBMC installed on it, which I don't remember it having, but apparently it does. And that's another one we found in a, in a box of tricks as well. But if we look at the uh, the rear of the the IDE header here, of course, this this is all fine, this is all okay. Um, but if we take a look, you know, coming out of here, and go a little bit further round, a little bit further round, you might be able to see it just in shot there, all these address lines here, that are wavy, 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 and of course it's quite important for timing. But you can see there, look, we have some corrosion, and that must have happened. This This actual piece of circuit it was hidden underneath that um, that chip, I presume. It's either a homebrew mod chip or a really early, really, really early mod chip. Um, unfortunately, that, that has been lurking underneath. And I remember, actually, we had a little bit of fun at the time, uh, me and my mate, when we found it. Uh, and we were having a mess about. I remember we were having some fun then, getting it to boot. And funnily enough, we reseated a few cables and just cleaned it out and fixed the power supply and then all of a sudden it started working but obviously at that point three years ago this corrosion probably it was probably just about starting now it appears it's eaten the entire track away because I can scrape this scrape it scrape it scrape it there's nothing there now you can just about see copper there um, you know but there's nothing really further down from that there and this obviously as well there's not this might not be as far gone. I'm hoping this curvy one isn't actually as far gone. I'm hoping maybe there's some copper under there we can we can use to recreate the circuit. But even this is getting to the point where it probably isn't going to be long before there's not a lot there to do. That veer as well is also looking a little bit sad for itself. And if we scrape it back, it's uh, it's not great it's not great the whole thing really isn't great so we're gonna to have to think of some way of um, repairing this now this is incredibly fine scale stuff I mean you're looking at it on the scope right and it's tiny now then the unfortunate thing is is I do have a fiberglass pencil somewhere in this office and can I find it for love and money can I hell no and that is where this fiberglass pencil will come in really handy so now I'm having to use a Stanley blade and I'm really not happy about this because this board is delicate as it is being in the condition that it's in and I really don't want to be scraping too hard or too far back with a Stanley blade because I can end up going straight through the board and that would be an absolute disaster so I'm hoping that this bit of corrosion here because being what it is uh, is actually going to uh, is actually going to be the issue it does come out from underneath the IDE port so obviously putting two and two together I'm hoping that this is uh, indeed going to prove to be the issue so I'm just trying to scrape this back just to see if there really is anything underneath but that doesn't look like it the V of itself is pretty nasty but there is a little bit of copper around the edge I'm not entirely sure what that V is whether it's a test point or what um, I think we're just going to have to hope that it is just a test point from somewhere it looks like it goes through ground to be honest but hopefully it's a test point and nothing more but either way I don't really want to leave that corrosion in there because that corrosion is just going to go through the board if I can at all help it so I'm just trying at the moment just to do my best just to pick away at it really gently just to try and get some things so I started off here obviously like I said I removed the uh, the really old what looks like a bit of a homebrew mod chip and um, I got to this point and found this and thought Do you know what this would be this would be quite a nice little thing you know like a retro repair because I don't think we've done any have we we've, we've done playstations but that's about it so I thought it would be quite cool to, to try and do one so there's nothing there you can see you know that that's, that trace has gone um, and the trace next to it that goes around the corner appears not to be too much better off because uh, obviously I don't want to scrape too hard because I don't want to go knackering and digging holes through this board but you can kind of see there's 
there's not really a lot there so I'm being really gentle and I am sort of like being really careful as I go here I'm not applying too much pressure at all there doesn't appear it doesn't feel to be much underneath there to be honest um, it all feels a bit a bit loose and a bit horrible so this is going to be really fine work yeah this is going to be really fine work this is going to be really awkward in fact I think the masking has given way between yeah it has the maskings come out between the two areas so this is a really weak a really weak area of the board okay this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be hairy so strap yourselves in I really wish I had that fiberglass pencil because this thing's too big this thing really is not the most ideal thing to be trying to strip a really fine trace back with normally I wouldn't care but because it is what it is and I really love this thing I really don't want to kill it and I really don't want to see it die so and I certainly don't want to see it die on camera that would be a disaster so all I'm trying to do at the minute is just scrape back as portion of this trace enough to solder something to um, so I'm going to go a little bit further down because obviously you know that the mask is damaged under there so fiberglass pencil right about now right, so we've got a little bit of that trace exposed there got the top and bottom of that trace exposed there now then the question is, is how do I want to, to play this? Because it's all going to get very, very fine. So, it's going to get very, very fine, is this? Get very, very precise. So, I'm going to go a little bit further down again here. see why shortly I'm not too bothered if I nick the other trace above it because we're gonna properly uh, seal this up when we're finished anyway pull this out from underneath the scope for a second
this is one of those times when a little bit of hand-eye coordination when you can directly see what you're doing is desirable doing it underneath the scope at arm's length it can be a little bit prohibitive at times so if I put this back under the scope now hopefully you'll see what we've done so it is not looking too good to be honest like I said that portion of the, of the board there is fairly nasty and corroded and unfortunately you know the thing is with the retro consoles and these things are certainly heading that way uh, is that over time things like this where they've had sort of like aftermarket installs and things like that you know it starts to you know the boards can start to rot particularly if they're not kept in the best environment and that's certainly fair to say uh, for this thing is that it hasn't been kept in the best environment at all so what I want to make sure now is that we have no continuity between the two tracers because that would also be a disaster and that would be something else we'd have to fix so I want to check the top trace at the moment so it's in continuity mode so we should hear a beep can see there we hear absolutely nothing so that trace is indeed done for and this trace goes around the corner so you can see there to there we get a beep multimeters reading around 1.3 ohms which is fine but we go above it onto the trace above which of course it goes around the corner and we hear nothing no beep at all and then if we check between the two traces because of course the masking is slightly damaged thankfully we hear nothing there so we haven't got any communication there between the two areas because obviously the corrosion has got underneath the mask and it's just lifted out unfortunately just there so this is going to need a little bit of TLC and a little bit of tat so what we're going to do is first of all I'm just going to try and fill that little veer in first off so I'm gonna get my fine soldering iron tip changed onto the jewelry I'm gonna get some fume extraction on in a second and then I'm gonna see if we can replace and repair this trace and then once we've done that we'll seal the thing in and hopefully we can save this Xbox from uh, from an early death because let's face it I'm going to be quite upset if this is dead so you can see the flux there look that's the via in question now then let's try and fill that via with some solder and use the heat to try and penetrate the, uh, the horribleness the corrosion just try and fill it with uh, a little bit of solder now then it does seem to be taking a little bit there we go that's it that's filled it so we'll just work it down so I need to work the solder down into the uh, into the board without doing too much at the via itself because we don't want to strip it and, uh, and burn it away but do just want to make sure that nothing is getting in there and it's all sealed up and fine so that, that will do for that one so we'll just clear that back in a sec what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to try and tin the points that we've scraped back so I'm going to put a little bit of solder in that track on those two pieces of track there top and on there so by scraping it back what you can actually do is because obviously you know that's just solder mask so once you scrape the solder mask away you've effectively got a very very small very very thin solder pad once you've tinned it with a bit of uh, with a bit of solder and that's what we've effectively done there we've converted those those traces into uh, into little solder pads so Hopefully, when we 
when we wash this back and get rid of all the uh, the flux and the horribleness, we'll be able to see what we've done. So you can see there that the via that was all corroded and nasty before is now shiny. So that's just sealed that in from any more horribleness. And you can see now that our trace portions there are looking nice and shiny as well. So now we need to run some wire. So remember this stuff that we actually used to repair PS4 HDMI circuits, this bell wire? Well, not bell wire, sorry, magnet wire. I always want to call it bell wire for some reason, it's magnet wire. So this transformer wire, whatever you want to call it, okay, you'll notice how thin the traces are when you hold this up. Because this is 36 gauge, okay, and it's probably just about, it might be a little bit thicker ever so slightly, it might be the same actually it might be slightly thicker, the, the traces themselves might be more equivalent to like 38 gauge wire so what we're going to do and this is going to be incredibly awkward with something so small is we are going to attempt at least to try and repair these traces now this is incredibly fine work and when you see it on the scope you probably won't appreciate it quite as much as if you were sat here looking at it in front of me so I've just realised I've got no bloody fuel extraction on so that's my next job before I do anything else let's put some fuel extraction on because I don't want to breathe in that shade no thank you so we're just going to get a bit of this uh, magnet wire and we're just going to strip the end with the soldering iron. So all we do is we melt a little bit of solder on the end of the iron and dip the end of the wire in. Okay. So once we've done that and you'll notice now, you can see the end of that's just tinned back. Clean the end of it off, and there we go. So, what we're going to do is we're going to drop a little bit of flux to the end of that wire. And then going to try and attach that wire to that trace. Now then, this is where you've got to be careful because if you make a false move here you can rip the trace out of the board and uh, then it will really will be good night Vienna for this poor, th <laughs> for this poor little thing. So this is uh see what I mean this is micro soldering at its uh, at its finest isn't it I mean. so you want to be try and be careful not to get onto the trace below it that's the Close. Let's see. Uh, the tip on this iron is slightly curved as well. It's had so much hammer. Okay. That's okay. So. I'm going to try and do what we did before. I'm just going to trim this wire. So, from here, I'm going to bend it and push it down to make sure it's flat to the board, and then I'm going to bend it and putting pressure on with the tweezers 
obviously towards the left hand side of the screen there and I'm holding it at the point where I want it to bend with the right hand side so that takes any strain off the connection and gets us a nice tight little, little line there which is what we want so I'm just gonna check where the damage is so now I'm gonna nip this wire very very carefully with the blade remember I don't want to go through the board at this point that would be a that would be a disaster okay Now then, the only trouble with this is, is that because this wire is so short, <laughs> and it's copper, it's going to conduct the heat from the iron incredibly well. And what I don't want to do is lift this out. And there's a very good chance, that's what's going to happen, there's a very good chance this wire's going to want to come with... There's a very good chance this wire is going to want to come with the iron. So I'm going to have to try and stop that somehow. This might look daft now, this. this you might look at this thinking, what the bloody hell are you doing this for? I'll probably buy one for a tenner. But in a few years you won't be able to. And like I said, this one's in a strange way, although it's not sentimental to me, it kind of is. <laughs> it, kind, it kind of is, in a way. So I'm just going to try and hold this wire. Ah, shit, see what I mean? That's what I'm talking about when I say it's going to want to come with. Because it is so short. This is going to be a nightmare of a job. So I'm just going to tin, try and tin it at the end. Off the camera for a sec. I would have sold it to the right bit, wouldn't it? Okay, so I can't see what I'm doing underneath there now. So, have to wash that back a little bit.
This is possibly the finest, tiniest work I've ever tried to do. I think we're in. I think we're on point and in position for that. So, let's just give this a, a clean up and then we can take a look just to make sure that we are indeed looking better than we certainly were. Tell you, nerves of steel are required for this. So have our little jumper wire there so let's see if indeed broken that off. Marvellous. It's because the portion of trace that we're trying to solder to is incredibly fine. And tiny and not in very good condition. So I'm not wanting to blast too much heat into the joint. That and the fact the wire is so short. Oh my. Hopefully that, hopefully that's going to be a little bit better. That V is not looking great, is it? I'm hoping that's a, a test point. Otherwise, I'm going to have to go very, very close to where I've sold that wire. Try to fill it in some more. Unless it's just the way the light's... No, actually, I think it's just the way the light on the camera's catching it. I think it's actually still full, luckily. I hope so, anyway. Looks nice and shiny to the naked eye anyway. I think it's just the way the light on the scope catches it. Looks worse than it is. There we go, that's better. Okay. So, let's just give this another quick rub-a-dub-dub. -dub. 
what I've done with my brush. I want to brush this rather than attacking it with the cotton bud. I'm just going to try this again. I'm just going to push the, uh, the wire. It's still moving, is that? That's not what you say. Uh, <laughs> when will it solder? When will this end? You know how this is going to end, don't you? I think I know how this is going to end. With the wire coming off. <laughs> uh, that seems to be... Seems to be in place now. I don't think it's going anywhere this time. So... We are sold into a very, very fine piece of trace there. So the wire is good, and I don't know if you'll be able to pick this up on, micro on the microphone, but hopefully you will. Multimeter reads 1 ohm and dropping, so that's cool. So that means we've got a, a nice connection there. So now we've got to do the other trace. What I do want to do though before I do that is just try and nick a hole. Just try and scrape back a tiny portion of the trace. Just bear with me a sec. Some things are just easier to do by eye. Right, so what I've done there is, and like I say, we're just gonna, we, you know, we'll insulate all this up again anyway at the end, so it's not, it's not a massive deal. What I've done is I've scraped a tiny portion of the trace away before and after the link wire, just to make sure that we are indeed soldered correctly. And then we're good. So hopefully, so just before and just after. See if we can get this on the microphone for you. Not point six ohms and dropping. Fantastic. Let's just check the other circuit just to make sure that we haven't got any interference there, which we haven't. Fantastic. Right. Happy days. That's that done. One down, one to go. This does absolutely nothing for my nerves, this. <laughs> I'm going to go incredibly close to where our previous joint was. So, I'm going to try and bend this now. I think we need some more flux.
Okay. So I know we're not going to get this perfect, but. to try and keep this wire as close to the original profile of that trace as possible. Because a lot of these address lines are, are timed, so that's why they wiggle, so that the outside data pins arrive the data that's carried down them arrives at the same time as the shorter traces. So what they do is they curl the inside ones. So the outside ones, by the time the data gets down them, they don't get there any quicker. Otherwise it creates maybe hell. And what we don't want to do is end up with maybe hell on our Xbox, because that would be bad. So I just want to try and nip through this wire very very gently without going through anything like the motherboard or an adjacent line because that would be uh, yeah. that would be pretty bad I'm not going to lie So I've got a little nick in there now, so I'm just going to try and break it off. And now, I'm going to try and solder the other end of that. Trace that seems nice and solid. I'm just going to try and bunch that up. Okay, that seems okay. You look at it on the camera and it looks fairly big, but I tell you now, you look at this by the naked eye. Woohoo! There's some fine work going on here. Some fine, fine, fine work going on here. And of course we filled that via. You can see just in between the two wires, the via that we ended up filling in. So we're just going, uh, we're just going around there now. Just cleaning the board off. Trying to get rid of any flux or residue or bits of corrosion that's come out while we've been doing our work. I'm hoping once we've done this we're going to have an Xbox that works again so I'm sort of you know, going back in with the alcohol but I'm really really conscious of leaving anything around this area of the board now that might contaminate it in future because that would be a disaster. I have to come back in here. Try and redo more work. So, now we need to test this. So, I'm going to knock the airflow off. That's better. I think I've just knocked the board out of sight there. That's the 
the only problem there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our new link wire is talking as it should do. So you can see there's a bit of exposed trace just before the link wire, and there's a little bit just above it. We get continuity. Not point four ohms and dropping. Fantastic. And of course, we already checked the other trace, but we'll just check it again. Not point four ohms and dropping. Fantastic. And we will just check while we're here that we haven't got any crosstalk or interference between the two lines, and we haven't. That's showing open line OL on the meter. Might show us a number one on your meter if you've got something slightly different to me. Which is a Fluke 18B plus. That's looking rather nice. And it's sounding rather nice too. So we've what we've we done here then, so we've filled in this via. This via was corroded, we filled that in with solder. We have repaired our two data address lines from our IDE port that were corroded. And uh yeah, that's looking okay now. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pop another tiny bit of IPA over the top and then what I'll do is that's just to get rid of any sort of final contaminants which may have been around there and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dab that off. Okay, that's it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this can't happen again. Now, the reason it happened in the first place was because during the time of installation of that what looks like a, a really early mod chip, uh, it looks like somebody has ever so slightly caught the solder mask covering the tracers to the IDE port and what's happened is is that over time obviously air and the moisture in the air certainly in here has got to the uh, has got to the, the exposed portion of trace and it's caused some corrosion and we've lost a couple of address lines on our IDE bus which has made us basically lose our hard drive and because we've lost our hard drive we've ended up with a, a hard drive timeout error from the Xbox at boot which if you an Xbox aficionado back in the day. You might remember E107. Sorry, E107. E07. E07. That's what we've ended up with here. So we're just going to cover our via as well that we had, of course. Remember the via that we filled in? We're covering that. We're going to cover everything. We're going to cover the trace. We're going to cover anything we think looks like it might be vulnerable so we're going to cover the entire portion of that circuit including the bits and pieces that if you remember we scraped back down here just to test okay the rest looks fine so that's that ladies and gentlemen so we can see there that we've applied our protective overcoat we've removed our mod board now then as far as I know because this machine when I when I used it before just looked like a standard dashboard didn't appear to have I'm pretty sure it didn't play backups uh, but anyway so I think we'll be alright with that board missing it can always go back on if needs be but it's going to need a bit of repairing if, if we are to put it back in just like what the traces did underneath so that's it ladies and gentlemen so that's going to take around 20 minutes to cure and harden and once it does we can get this reassembled put back in the machine and we can see this time if we get a uh, a booting xbox and we get dashboard because before e07 was no fun because i've got the grand theft auto trilogy in the cupboard and I really want to have a bash. I'm just going to wait for this to cure and harden. Probably going to go for my tea, to be honest. Um, 
yep, wait for it to cure and harden, and then I'm going to come back and uh, we'll put it back in the chassis, and hopefully we'll get boot. So uh, stay tuned, ladies and gents, and I'll see you in a sec. Right, okay, so it's been a few weeks actually since uh, we finished the repair on the Xbox, and uh, I've just not got around to filming the testing. However, now it's all back in one piece. Um, I'd like to show you it working just to prove that our repair was indeed successful. So here we go, we've got it plugged into the TV behind, and that appears to have gone back into standby, so... Just turn that back on for a second. Okay, and we'll start it up. That noise you can hear is the... Well, you might be able to hear it. It's actually the inbuilt DVD player in the TV that's knackered, but... Uh, and that little Microsoft logo at the bottom there tells us that we're booting into Dash. And there we go. So we weren't getting that before. It uh, it just used to sit at the Microsoft logo. Well, it didn't used to sit at the Microsoft logo. It wouldn't get to the Microsoft logo. It used to sit at the Xbox splash screen, and you'd be waiting, waiting, waiting for the little Microsoft thing to loading down the bottom to tell us we were successfully booting, and uh, we never got it. Instead, we got EO7 and the uh, message to call Xbox support, which uh, you know I don't think they'd uh, do much for our. Uh, original Xbox anymore unfortunately but uh, luckily enough we managed to be able to resolve the issue and get this thing back working again which is just as well because I'm really fond of these old things and uh, this one's going to be in my collection for some time to come so as you can see there now that's all working absolutely beautifully and we're good to go on that one so just like to say thank you very much for watching and uh, Although I don't think many of you will be out there in the business of repairing these things. You know, these things are getting older now. Um, I wouldn't say they're quite retro just yet, but it won't be far before they are. And, uh, you know, obviously many of these things were modded for dashboards and other things like that, and XBMC. So there's a good chance that this might affect a few more machines going down the line, you know, where people have accidentally nicked through the, uh, the conformal coating on the motherboard. And... Uh, you know, like I say, in, in instances where they've been kept in humid uh, conditions or, you know, damp conditions, like in boxes in attics and things like that, you may very well find that this kind of thing plagues a few more machines than you might think. So it might be a useful one for the future for any retro repairers out there. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed it at least, even if it's not going to prove too useful to you. And, uh, and like I say, you've, you've got some volume out of it. Even if it's just to show you that even tiny traces and, and complex traces can be repaired using some fairly conventional, if not simple, techniques. So, thanks for watching. And, I well, I hope you found it useful, that you've at least enjoyed it, as I've said before. And uh, I'll see you on the next vids. So, uh, next one hopefully won't be so long. I've had a bit of a break from uh, videos on YouTube. Uh, I've got a few machines coming up which hopefully will uh, provide some interesting uh, footage. So I will see you shortly, boys and girls, on the next video. As before, as always, if you do have any questions or any comments, please feel free to pop them down below. Comment, rate, and subscribe to the channel here. And I will see you, boys and girls, on the next vid. So from me, for now, it's bye-bye, and uh, see you on the next one. Many thanks for watching then ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you've enjoyed this video, if you have then why not check out these recommendations below. Also, please remember to comment, rate and of course subscribe to the channel if you found this useful. We have plenty more content on there and there's lots more to come.